Okay, Algebra 1, we are going to do the converting to slope intercept form. So this is one of um, my favorite forms, but sometimes the equation of the line is not in that form. So we're going to talk about how to get it there. So it says, what is the equation of the graph shown at the right? Well, usually when we have a graph, when we take the information from the graph, we write that equation in slope intercept form. So, for example, if I were looking at this, my y-intercept would be a 2. And then my slope, let's see where my next spot would be, would be, so this would be a down, 2, right, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So negative 2, 3. So my equation, so we know how to do this, but it doesn't match any of our, any of the given equations. So it says it's difficult to tell what the graphs of the equations will look like. To learn how to answer the question above, let's look at some equations that are not in slope-intercept form. Rewrite the equations below in slope-intercept form, then graph them on the same coordinate plane. So for example, this one, the only thing we have to do is flip-flop these two um, terms in the equation. So I would write it one-third x, the two is positive, so it would be plus two. The next one, same type of thing, you might want to write a 1 in front of the x just to remind you. And then this is a negative 3. So instead of writing plus b, I'm just going to write minus 3. Same thing here, except this negative is going to go with the 2x. So this is going to be a negative 2x. And then the 4 is positive, so it's going to be plus 4. And then this one, the 1 is over here. I'm going to leave that 3 fourths x here. And then remember to move anything to the other side, you add, oops, sorry, not an x, you add or subtract it. So this would be minus one. Okay, we can move things like that. So if we are gonna graph these, the first one would start at positive two, up one over three. There's my first one. Draw a line. Okay, my second one, I start at negative three. And my slope is a positive one, up one over one. My third one starts at positive four, right here. It's a negative, so down two over one, down two over one, and it goes like that. You can see how much faster graphing has become for us. The last one, it's at negative one, so it starts right here. And then down three, one, two, three, over four. One, two, three, four. So once it's in slope-intercept form, our graphing gets much quicker. So in the last question, we had to isolate y, get y alone. You guys have worked with these types of equations, so we're just going to practice the skill below. So we want to get y alone, kind of draw your line of your equation there. What would you have to do to move the 2x over to the other side? Well, on this one, we just add 2x to both sides. Now, because we know that slope-intercept form looks like this, I will jump into writing that right away. It's a positive 2x, so I put 2x, and the 7 is also positive, so it's y equals 2x plus 7. Okay, the next one. You want to move the 3 away from the y, so you subtract the 3. That cancels. y equals 1 fifth x just stays. You can't take uh, the whole number away from an x, so just remember that it just is going to be written like that. Next one, we're going to move this whole term to the other side. So we're going to add 2 thirds x. We're going to add 2 thirds x. So this cancels. y equals, it's a positive 2 thirds x. And then this is a minus 5, so that has to stay there like that. This one, you have to get the y alone. And so in order to do so, Remember, we're going to separate these. They're being multiplied. We have to divide. When you divide, you have to divide both things on this side by the 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. If that would have been a fraction, you just leave it as a fraction, too. So if it had been like 
one x, it would be one half. Okay, so those were all just one step equations to get y by itself. Now we're gonna do a couple that are more than one step. Okay, we're still solving for y, of course. Just a reminder, we're gonna y equals mx plus b. So in this one, remember, you're gonna move whoever's furthest away from y first. So in this one, I would subtract the three x. So this is gonna be four y equals. I know my x term comes first, so I write it first. And then my next step would be to get the y alone. So I'm gonna divide by four. Remember, you have to divide everything by four. That one cancels. Y equals, this turns into negative 3 fourths X, and then eight divided by four is just two. Okay, the next one, Y is right here. So first I'm gonna move my X. I'm gonna add X to both sides. What this equation looks like then is just a positive X. You can put a one there. Sometimes that's really nice for a, just a visual. And then it's minus 21. To get the y by itself, you divide everything by a seven. These aren't always gonna come out nice, like this is just gonna be one seventh x, that's your slope. Minus stays there, 21 divided by seven is three. Okay, then last one over here. You're still getting y alone. I'm gonna move that eight first. The eight is positive, focus on what's in front of it. So we are gonna subtract eight on both sides. Negative two y equals five x minus eight. There's a negative with this two, make sure we don't forget that. So we're gonna divide everything by a negative two. So when I divide it by the negative two, it turned the five into a negative five halves. Remember, we don't write it as a mixed number, but then the eight, it was a minus eight, or, you know, so then this is gonna turn into a positive four. So you gotta pay attention to our signs on those things. Couple more here. Sometimes they look a little crazy. So um, sometimes you are, we're gonna work with different things like point slope form and, and other forms. So you might end up with some parentheses. Well, we can always, Distribute first, simplify that. Anytime you can't do what's inside the parentheses, you distribute to inside of them. So this is a negative four y minus four equals six x minus 24. And then our goal is still to get the y by itself. So first I'm gonna add the four and I can only add that to the 24. Negative four y equals six x minus 20, and our last step was to divide by that negative four. Y equals, and then this is six fourths, but that gonna, is gonna reduce to three halves. Negative, negative turns to a positive. Okay, I want you guys to try this one on your own, and then we'll come back to it in class, okay? So pause my video and do that one. And then we're gonna talk about this. While we're on the topic of weird looking linear equations, let's discover the shape of a couple others. So anytime you have a y equals, that means for every term, the y equals that number. So if you were to plot this over here, you would have a negative two and y is three. Negative one and y is three. So it goes like this. Davidson, and then your line looks like that. The other way is that every x is, a val is that value that's given. So then my x would be negative 2, my y is negative 2, and so on and so forth. So it looks like this. So what's kind of cool about this is that you know what the graph is going to look like before you actually have to graph all those points. So we can say the graph of YC produces, well the Y's, remember, are going, oops, are going to produce a horizontal line and the X's are going to produce a vertical. 
So the Ys are going to produce a horizontal line, and the X of C produces a vertical. So graph the equations on the line below, so that we're on the coordinate plane. So you can just do X equals 4. So remember that X equals is a vertical. It means that every X is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right here. And you can just simply go, that's your x equals 4. y equals 2. And that one's going to go right here. Okay. And then they keep on going. I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to let you guys do the rest of those. And we'll talk about those in class. And then we are going to end with this. We, I want you guys to try to do this on your own. See if you can answer this question. This was our original statement. I did make, give you space down here to solve them out and see if you can answer that. And then we will regroup and come back together about that in class.